And welcome everybody to another exciting night of Tech Thursday. I am your host, Akeem Sanders. And we have a live with us, joining us as our special guest as we talk about technology and COVID-19. Without further ado, I will introduce our guest. Good, welcome, Dwayne. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, thanks for, for, for joining us tonight. Are you are you there? Yeah. All right. I'm so here. First, I'm here. I can hear you. Okay, great. So first and foremost, uh, welcome, Dwayne. Uh, how has it been for you and your family? Uh, are you guys locked down? Uh, uh, are you one of those privileged persons to be roaming the streets? <laughs> nah, ain't no road for me. We lock down, lock around, and lock in. <laughs> you know. Uh, Due to the nature of my job, I'm exempted, but I haven't really been anywhere. I think today I left the I left the house for maybe ten minutes and came back, but um, I haven't moved at all, pretty much, to be honest with you. Okay. 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 Sounds good. So I mean, I I want to talk about that and some more because you being you work in a life, and I think a life is the innovative um, telecommunications company in the Bahamas. Um, and you spearheading uh, the technical team on that side. Uh, being in, in IT, you guys have the luxury from working from home, so to speak, right? So to speak, yeah. I mean, um, we were able we were able to rapidly deploy from home working um, pretty much immediately, based on okay. how we built the network. You know, because um, you know, with us, basically, we use our cell phones for everything, and everybody has a laptop, so it was easy to migrate home. Uh, from the office setting. Okay, right, sounds great. Um, how? What are some of the challenges that Alive may have faced? So, what are some of the challenges the world has faced as related to technology, and more so as a service provider um, during this whole COVID nineteen pandemic, and persons now being able to, um, I guess, lock uh, lock down from home, and and now the internet and technology is the next best thing. How how has that been for a life? And, and, and your counterparts around the world? I mean, if you look at it globally, there's been um, a massive up, uptick for data, right? Um, you know, it's not data to do homework or data to browse, it's basically streaming data, right? Persons at home and persons want to do Netflix, they want to do YouTube. Um, then there's been a lot of, of demand for persons to work from home utilizing uh, like Zoom or Teams um, or Skype for business, you know, but the, the reality is that uh, the network's been taken, you know, quite a hit because the data demand is crazy. And I think when you look at it, I think the evening hours between like seven, eight o'clock until about 11 or midnight is the worst because I think as people, during the day, I think people, now that the, 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 the lockdown has lifted, meaning that persons don't, everything's open, persons will see a better performance during the day because more persons are on the road. But when you see the hours hit right now, like right now, everybody's basically going in or should be in now preparing for the nine o'clock curfew. Right. And then I think that's when you see an explosion either. But the more data you add, the, the more demand you get. Right, you could add you add data, you get more use. It's the thing that we're managing every single day, every day. Not only on the live, but also on Cable Bahamas with the home internet. Right, mm -hmm. um, we get people call say, "Oh, uh, my child need to do his homework nine, ten o'clock at night," and you know he's like, "Yeah." In other words, you want to get on to do some YouTube or maybe do some Netflix. Right. And, and I think, yeah, and I think that's what's been, um, I think that's what's been hammering the network lately. Okay. So, all right. So, I mean, it sounds good. So, uh, are your kids um, doing homework and and all that other good stuff? Um, do they have homework? Uh, or is it my excuse for a person to use Netflix and, and YouTube? No, I mean, my daughter was evacuated from Canada from school before Canada shut down its borders. She came on that Wednesday, 
self quarantine, and then um, that Sunday, uh, they stop allowing uh, persons to come out. Um, so she's okay. doing her online classes. I know this morning she had an online exam. Uh, my son, uh, his school uh, went fully online. I think the first week of lockdown, the first two and a half, maybe three days, you know, they were giving us work for him to do. But by the third day and into this week, that he goes on like 9 a.m., then he takes like a 10.30 break. Break to give him work to do. He has lunch, then he's back on one third by three. And he uploads his work online. Online, but then again, he goes to a, 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 a private school with smaller, so I guess it might be easier for them. But he's so, online five days a week, and you know what's so amazing is how independent he is. He's in grade four, so he goes on, he does his work. Um, mm -hmm. You know, of course, you got to keep him focused as usual, right. you know. But uh, but everybody's working online, and then for me, as you can see, in my off my home office, so I'm working for my office as well too. Right, right, right. How how was the um. I mean, I said, well, I'm going to ask the question. How, how was working from home work for you? Well, for me, you know, for me, it's, it, it's good and bad. I mean, good in the fact that prior to going to live, you know, I've had my own business for 10 years. Okay. So I've always worked the first three years of my business myself and an assistant work out of my home office for like four years. Or okay. three years, three and a half years. And then as the business grew, I then decided to get um, co-location space at the um, at a, at a location on Rosetta Street. So, but during the summer months, when, you know, when um, the kids are home, you don't have to get up early, you don't have to drop school, no, try to come in my office and work. So for me, you know, the routine is I wake up early, I hit the treadmill, try to do like two or three miles, then I come in my office. So working from home for me is good. The only thing is I have such a big team. Right. So on a daily basis, I manage like 33 persons, right? So between a live and, and my private business and my son, so it's a lot going on, right? You got calls all day, you're checking in on people. Um, working from home is still relatively new to the Bahamas. So a lot of persons, you still got to keep them in that frame of mind that, hey, we're working, hey, we're working. So for me, you know, it's amazing. I've been working from home now almost three weeks, going on to a month because the week leading into the lockdown, um, I had a bad sinus infection, so I stayed out of the office. So I went to work that Monday for the first day. We shut down, so I've been back home working. So I haven't missed a beat at all. All right, sounds good. Uh, but do you you have that sinus um, the sinus under control, yes? Yeah, you know how it is. You never get sinus under control. My biggest thing is I'm a coffee drinker, so you know I right. love milk. So I drink a lot of dairy, and you know dairy oh. is one of the big things that deals with sinuses. But I'm coping. Yeah. Isn't it? All right, so we have a we have a question coming in uh, asking, what is your position idolized? Right now, I'm the CIO, I'm the Chief Information Officer. So basically, I manage uh, my team and I manage the manage the technology platform. So we were responsible for all. If you have a, a live device, we basically manage to support that. We do, we help with the provisioning of that. We help with the app. Um, we deal with all the plans, all the purchases, all the prepaid, the postpaid, the billing, um, the private network, the, the, the app, the website. So pretty much we run everything on the inside um, of the business. All right. So you have an awesome task. Uh, my team and I, yeah. You know, yeah, not, yeah. Not me not me specifically, but yeah, we, we do. We have a right. lot. To, I mean, there's a lot. Um, I mean, basically every single thing on the inside we touch and we manage, yes. um, which is which is which is pretty good, you know. Yep. So I know a few weeks ago you guys um, fully merged, but I know well, here Bahamas was ever your parent company, but I think now the the merger between Alive and and Care Bahamas fully came together and offer a sort of a one stop solution for mobile and for uh, residential or office stuff. Um, how was that um, sort of co new, co new cohesiveness, new relationship been during this uh, sort of COVID-19 um, times? Well, when you, look at, when you look at consolidation, we have our corporate department consolidated, right? 
the retail side of the business is still independent with Alive, with Damon Blackburn as the CEO. Uh, but then the corporate um, side of Alive, which, which you'll call your postpaid for businesses. So now what that did was actually was pretty powerful because what it did was it allowed customers not to have a one-stop shop if they want um, business fiber, if they wanted uh, phone services, PBX, small phone services, they want, or if they want um, a mobile service. You know, they, they offer something called business in a box, right? Mm-hmm. And the business in the box means that if you're a small businessman, you could go to the business, they give you a line line, that's what the line line is, you know, audible, as well as they can give you off the top of that, you got the whole backbone of a live that, that um, Uncable Bahamas that supports you. If you look at, as well as our engineering teams came together as well too, right? When you look at the network and the management of the network, you know, you would not believe that this is managed by young behemoths. I think some of the oldest guys, those guys as young as 20 something all the way up to, you know, early forties. And they work alongside uh, Huawei and um, all of our other engineers and Juniper and so forth. But the network that brought us to Hurricane Dorian, the network that's taken us through, through this pandemic, is basically young behemoth engineers. Um, the good thing we did was on the live side was when we built and uh, when we came to existence in 2016, we had what we call engineer apprentices. And they worked alongside these engineers. So two years ago, all the in- majority of the engineers left the Bahamas and they pretty much left um, the young behemoths in charge of the business. So. It's proud to work to work alongside these guys. You know, they're smart, they're intelligent. They know way more than me, right? Because their brains are younger than mine. So you right. know, we we rely on them quite a bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, All right. So, 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 sounds good. Sounds good. Um, I mean, I, I know um, earlier this week you talked to Facebook um, and you was giving some tips. Um, the persons who face, I guess, an network congestion, um, who always complaining, but um, uh, they're trying to um, have a, a, a Skype or a Zoom meeting. And you are giving out some, some tips um, in regards to how to, how to help them uh, manage this new virtual uh, way of living. Um, do you care to share some of those tips um, on the show? Sure. What we did was... Um... Yesterday morning, I got up and I was, um, I was on the treadmill and, you know, I, I normally watch CBS Sunday morning. And one of the things that came up was the impact that's on the world right now as it relates to data, um, people wanting data, right? Um, you know, one of the things I said is that, first of all, the Bahamas is not in this bias, right? Um, this is impacting everybody. But the thing, the thing that a lot of Bahamas need to realize, because you know, people think because we're on an island that uh, we don't have the level of technology, but the LTE 4G technology in the Bahamas is probably one of the best in this region, in the Caribbean region, when you look at it, right? right. Um, so some of the things I said, for example, if you're locked down during the quarantine, right? One of the things that, um, one of the things that you would note is that people are getting frustrated, right? Person like, oh, I'm paying for this data, I'm not getting it. But the the issue that most persons are having really is congestions that could be avoided. For example, a lot of persons like YouTube. If you go into YouTube right now, you notice that what YouTube did due to the global demand, it dropped the quality of the video from 1080p down to 480p. People say, what is that? 1080p is high HD definition. Yeah. Right. So 480p will be the low end of HD, but doesn't require as much bandwidth. Correct. Right. Um, another issue is everybody wants to watch Netflix. Now, a lot of persons are really may use Netflix on their on their tablet, their phone, or maybe their computers. But mm-hmm. Netflix has a feature where you can download the movies which you want to watch. I think it stays current for a couple of days on your device, and then you can watch them offline, no buffering. <laughs> And then you have the demand on the network, right? Um, it seems like the new thing nowadays is everybody want to go live on Facebook, right? right? Facebook Live also takes data. So what it does for you is, you know, it also kills a lot of data and takes a lot of data off the network. Um, if you're doing stuff like email, if you're chatting, if you're downloading a photo from Facebook, 
I mean from Instagram or from uh, WhatsApp. If you download a, do a document or a photo or image from WhatsApp, it's gonna download. But yeah. when you make a WhatsApp call, you may get that buffer as well too, right? right? I also told persons, if you're working from home, if you're using Zoom or you're using um, Microsoft Teams, turn off the video. The voice traffic uses much less data yeah. than a video call would. Like right now, you and I are streaming live. So right, right now, right now in my neighborhood, um, probably another. One very, very important thing. In the Bahamas, there's something called congestion. Congestion. So, so right? I, I just lost you just now, and the audience just lost you. All right, I'm back now? Yes. Okay, there's something called congestion. Mm -hmm. Congestion means that if I live in a neighborhood with a hell of a lot of people, everybody in that neighborhood is trying to do the exact same thing, yeah. right? Um, everybody's trying to do YouTube or everyone's trying to do Netflix. So what happens is that the more persons that get on the, let's say the cellular network, the less traffic that's available. So what it does is that it slows down um, your connectivity and it impacts it, right? Unfortunately, networks around the world experience that. Um, the Bahamas may see it more now because everybody is home. Oh, yeah. Normally, on any given night, people would be spread all over the place, so you'd be bouncing up different towers. But if you have a couple hundred people, a couple thousand people in one area, all attaching to the same tower, at some point, something's going to give, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so that's what a lot of people are experiencing right now, is that it has nothing to do with the network. It's just that there's a lot of persons in that neighborhood using that data. So this is, people may say, well, add more bandwidth. The more bandwidth you add, the more bandwidth they're going to consume. Right. Um, so you may say, hey, well, why didn't you build a network knowing this? Actually, we did. We built the network knowing that we have congestion, but nobody built the network to know that you're going to have 200 plus thousand persons on an island, all sitting at home, all in one area, all trying to basically access the same amount of data. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. You, you, you raise some valid points, right? Um, I, I want to carry the conversation slightly, slightly to a different direction because um, I see there's a new trend around the world, um, such as Italy, such as um, um, China, and I think the U.S. is now launching what they could consider 5G. And, yeah. and there is a lot of, I guess, misinformed uh, information, and then there's, there's some um, truth to the information as relates to the 5G technology. Um, given this pandemic that we now face, right? I given the information that's out there as relates to 5G. Um, and you don't have to, you could just speak broadly. Um, do you think that it is something for the Bahamas now to, to now take into consideration of bringing 5G to the Bahamas? Um, or we should just continue to build on what we currently have now? Well, to be honest, there's absolutely positively nothing that ties the corona pandemic to 5G, right? Um, in very broad layman term, 5G is a technology that was just introduced to the U.S. last year, the middle of 2019, right? Yeah. It is still a relatively new technology, um, but you got to look at what a person's using 5G for. In many, other, in, many, in many countries, persons use 5G for like AI, artificial intelligence. But AI has been around, AI has been, has been, has evolved so much over the last two years, you don't need 5G for it. For example, if you were to go on to a website and they have um, chat, you'll automatically see something and say, hey, good evening, how can I help you? And that's called, that's artificial intelligence, something called bots. Right. Yeah. So what they do is they put their top 15 or 20 questions as which you may ask. If you go, for example, the other day I wanted to find out um, about some travel on WestJet. So when I went to, so I download that WhatsApp uh, web page and automatically says, welcome to WestJet. How can I help you? And I'm like, um, they said, what do you want? I said, ticket. They said, put in your ticket number. You put in your ticket number. Hi, Dwayne, here's your ticket. How can I help you? Right. So that's all artificial intelligence you're talking to. You don't need 5G for that. 
in, in the world of technology, everybody's ready for the next new hot thing, right? Um, and as far as is 5G in the Bahamas, no. Uh, is 5G being plans, it, it's difficult to say right now. But for example, if you have a, if you're on your live network, minus the pandemic and the congestion, you could get speeds up to 30, 40, 50 megs, yep. right? So we're running a 4G LTE fast network. And when you look at the size of the Bahamas, you have a user population, maybe 350, 380,000 persons. The question is, would any company do the necessary investment for right? 5G around the world is still very new. I think Sprint was first in the U.S. and actually launched it. But also, you know, when you look at the Bahamas, the entire Bahamas, every island in the Bahamas um, from from Bimini all the way down to Inagua has access to the 4G LT network. They have access to the same speed. You can't say the same for the US. There's some places in the US that still doesn't go about 3G, right? Okay. When I was down in for Carnival, I never connected about 3G. Wow. Right? There's still some countries in the Caribbean that doesn't have LTE 4G. So a lot of the network was one of the pure G LT networks built in the world 2016. Right now, if you look at our costs for, for mobile service, it's still very competitive. My daughter was in school and it was so expensive for her to get a plan. I think the cheapest plan we could get for like $75. I think the cheapest one in the live network is like $20. It's like $30, right? Mm -hmm. And she's like, Daddy, I don't need it because she's on Wi Fi the entire time while she's in samples and everywhere she goes, right? Mm -hmm. You also have connected cities as well, too. Um, and they'll talk about radiation. You know, one thing, one of the studies that was done a while was that if you look at a tower, unless you automatically up in the crow's nest in the tower, you can have very little impact from radiation. Your radiation comes from your phone. You know, one of the biggest emitters of radiation is your microwave oven that everybody uses in the house on, on a daily basis, right? So radiation is there, but the dynamic and the new water and the Illuminati's I guess people are just home with a lot of free time in their hands and, you know, people right. just think about things, you know? <laughs> right. You'll be amazed. I think um, I was amazed on Facebook yesterday, the amount of people that actually think that um, the coronavirus is putting the food out, population control, um, as well as um, it was putting the air to um, control people on, oh, this is government to take over, but I don't know which government's going to break its country and citizens to try and take over. So I think when you're home, you think you know, all of the, the the crazy stuff that you might read or see in the movie, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, one, one thing we've lived in this digital, this digital age is information is comes at the speed of light almost, right? Almost real-time instant. And so there's a lot of conspiracy theories that's 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 out there, and and I mean you just type conspiracy, and then Google just gives you a, a whole plethora, uh, uh, plethora yeah. of of items that could possibly be going on actually to this COVID nineteen um, pandemic. And then, but then also to when you look at technology and you look at usage, right? Um, you know, some I think some of like the most popular applications you see on the network in the Bahamas would be other than a um, you got Netflix, um, you got Amazon videos, you have YouTube, you have Instagram, you got Facebook. Um, there's some good porn sites that there. people are bouncing around as well too. You got the gaming sites. And then, of course, the new thing now, even myself, is that, you know, you got Eyewitness News and Cable 12, and ZNS would broadcast the newscast live on the internet, right? So technology that means where so many persons are renting rooms or renting an apartment that they don't qualify for internet and so many of them don't have a home phone. Their only access to the world is via the cell phone. Yep. yep. I, I'm, I'm actually one of those persons. Um... I really don't have a, a house phone, or no, an office phone uh, per se. So I just use all my cell phones to, to connect. So uh, you're quite correct. But I, I, I want to take the conversation into slightly, I want to backtrack slightly a bit. Um, and let's talk about businesses in the Bahamas. 
And whether sure. or not, uh, whether or not do you think that businesses in Bahamas have are now looking at um, integrating technology fully now, given this pandemic, um, into their business arena? And whether or not um, companies now or IT companies now are prepared for this for this demand that's going to be placed on on the IT world. Boy, Kim, unless you see something I don't see, I don't know. Um, I've had, I've been in technology about 26, 27 years, and I've had my own business in those years, right? Uh, a lot of businesses, here, right, they don't see it as a benefit, right? Uh, when you look at ma many of our big retailers, very few of them have the ability to, um, to do online shopping, right? Uh, for example, right now, there's no reason for anyone to be crowded um, in front of the supermarkets or right now, Kelly's is closed, um, Commonwealth Building Supplies is closed. Why couldn't they stay open, close the storefront, but keep their warehouse and you can order your stuff online and have it delivered, right? Sadly, a lot of, let me, let me share a story with you. I remember um, a couple of years ago, I ran this particular business and I was advertising my business and I was like, you know, um, we could offer X, Y, Z. So, you know, I went in and the guys had come in doing an assessment. They had a little small closet with no, no proper air circulation, or all air 400 gathering dust. Mm. And basically his nephew, who he says good at, who says good at computers, basically he could plug up a computer and his IT person, right? And so a lot of them is that if it doesn't break, don't fix it. So. Yeah. They'll keep that old system. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of companies went from Windows XP because Microsoft refused to, serve, to support it anymore, right, on the desktop. Then they went to Windows 7, and a lot of companies stayed with Windows 7, and now Microsoft is forcing them to Windows 10. You know, um, sadly, in the Bahamas, a lot of businesses don't take technology serious. We saw that with Dorian. Uh, we're seeing that now with, um, with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, there are a lot of good IT companies in the Bahamas, and there's a lot of possibilities for it, you know, but there's also an underlying nature in the Bahamas and the fact that we love foreign, right? Um, I've had clients bring in a foreign company to do what I could do, and um, they're good with that. They're good with going to the bank, buying, the, buying some U.S. dollars, doing the conversion, wiring it out. Um, but I hope that this opened the eyes of a lot of people. You know, I hope to see the Kellys and the Commonwealth Building Supplies and the AIDs and the Hannah's Plumbing and some of them um, develop a website. The same POS system that you use for the customer in the store, you could tie into a website and get a proper website. You know how many millions and millions and millions of dollars are left on the table because uh, persons haven't, haven't embraced technology? You yep. know, practically the distance, right? So if you're distancing and your storefront is closed, but your warehouse is open, what's to stop someone bringing a delivery to your house? You pay it with your debit or credit card and you drop it on the porch, right? Uh, if you look at it like this morning I had to go out and there's still long lines to go into the bank. You know, I told, I said to my wife the other day, I have not been to a teller machine in about two weeks because technically speaking, I didn't need any money. Right. I pay all of my bills, my BC, uh, my live, um, and my uh, every sale, BPL, I pay all my bills online, right? I utilize the app. And then on top of that, I pay a lot of them for credit card and get the points, right? And then pay the credit card off <laughs> at the end of the month. And then you can use right. those points for something else. Exactly. You know, all my staff are required to have a bank account. So we pay them online. So there's absolutely positively no need for me to go into a bank. And, and, I, and I said, uh, you can't even say even to the bus because now you can use the, you can utilize the uh, tele machines now to go ahead and and, and do uh, sorry the ATM machines to go ahead and do just that. Yeah, the only thing I was upset about was when they got rid of the fast deposit eh? because the fast deposit you run you run and you get a check you deposit it a day or two is on your account, you know. But um, other than that, there's no need there's no need for I w I wish Bahamas would use. You know, you got a thousand dollar iPhone or Samsung phone in your hand. Use it for something more than, you know, WhatsApp sharing and Facebook, right? right. Use it to actually do some things, you know, like Amazon. Right. We, we, we shop a lot with Amazon uh, with the shipping and so forth. So let's hope 
that this this uh, this pandemic opened some business eyes and uh, you know my son and make sure she had to help also alive and kill bombs also here for the data back end. Yeah, and, and most definitely, uh, um, I think it's it's it's, uh, uh, it's it's that time that um, all of these companies, even some consultants, will be able now to assist companies um, integrate mm -hmm. the various technologies to bring um, mm -hmm. forward innovative and uh, new ways um, to to operate your business. Um, you know, um, and I and I want to give a, a shout out right now to all of Tech Thursday sponsors. Uh, Tech Thursday is sponsored by Sonus Consultants Limited, implementing IT solutions that fit, Bahamas IP, TV and communication solutions for all your IP TV needs, and a live a live sponsor. Us. So if you haven't, um, if you need a top up or anything, get, uh, dial six one one. Uh, go to the app or go to their uh, websites and give them and get yourself sorted out with whatever data plan you need. Um, so and that's the you thing too, us. you know, yeah, because you know with the live, even though the stores are closed, if you have the app and we have the new app, now, right. to be honest, we've had some challenge, persons have challenges with the new app because a couple things. Number one, if you had an old, if you had an older model phone, like a J2, J3, J6 or whatever, um, you may not have been able to download the app from the website, but we have a, a file that we can put on your phone and you'll be able to use it, right? Okay. Uh, we had some complaints about security and the app a couple of months ago. So what we did was we put a two-factor authentication, just like you would like if you go into Amazon or anything that involves money. So right. what the Alive app allows you to do is you can put your debit and credit card in. If you click auto renew, when your plan is due, it automatically takes the plan off your debit or credit card. Right. We have the app, if you, are, if you have a, a postpaid account with a line, we have something called auto pay. So if you put your credit or debit card in the app, it automatically takes the balance due at the end of each month. So you don't have to worry about going to the bank, right? Also, if you have a child or someone that you want to, that you want to send money to, we get the transfer feature. We okay. have the auto top up feature, um, you know, so we have all of those features are there. Um, and then also, you know, one of the things that we don't advertise much is also there like BTC is the, is the USSD. So you do star 200 or star 201 and you're able to also do some of the same thing from the app utilizing the older mobile phone and uh, USSD. Okay. Sounds, sounds good. So, sounds good. So, um, I mean, we really appreciate what Alive is doing during this time as relates to uh, keeping um, the, the network up uh, or sustain the network to a particular point that persons are able to um, the minimum, uh, which they require in terms of internet um, um, mm -hmm. requirements, along with uh, KO Bahamas. Because um, I know right now I'm utilizing both services um, to to care of the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so, so uh, I, I really appreciate you coming on tonight and, and discussing with us. Um, do you do you know if there's any sneak pr uh, previews that uh, Bahamas need to look for as relates to live? Um, do you guys have any packages coming out? Um, any any sneak peeks or do yeah. you guys have to wait and see? I mean, no, I mean, right? We got to buy three, get one free data package. Okay. Um, we also, you will also see some innovations coming up. Don't want to preempt it right now, but we're always right. pushing the envelope, right? Um, you can also see us get a lot more community based, right? Yep. Um, we've been going to the local parks on the weekends and, you know, uh, face painting and cotton candy and, and sweets and so forth on the parks. Um, but we know there's one thing we want to address, right? For example, we have these my bar boxes, these my five boxes, right? And mm -hmm. we know a lot of persons have been utilizing them during this time as well, too. Now, the difference between a mobile box and a phone is that on our network, a phone traffic is prioritized. So your phone can do everything a mobile box will do. So technically speaking, a, a portable Wi-Fi box would be, for example, if you have a child who wants to do homework or who wants to do something that you got a little small black one, they can attach their laptop to it. Or we have the device like what you would use, which is a high-end um corporate device that can also run the business right? right but once again congestion plays a role so if you're in a neighborhood and if you have if you have 10 my five boxes 
and a hundred phone users, the boxes are gonna consume a lot more bandwidth than the phone. So we tell persons that look, if you have a MiFi box, still put a plan on your phone. So at least with the MiFi box buffer, you can always switch over to your phone and have access and their phone as well too. Right? right. And I just want to say on behalf of Live, we know some customers have been frustrated with getting on the network or if they're on a the network where they see slow speeds. Um, that could be congestion, that could be the fact you utilize all the data on your box. Uh, that data might slow down. Um, something that we work on every single day between the network. A couple of um, So, what you do is you have with us, have a little bit of patience. And when you do call 611, I guarantee you that every single is escalated um, to my time. So, we're able to research it and help you with it. All right, so, so you know, so stay good. tuned. There's gonna be some nice stuff coming down the pipe. Yeah, man. Indeed, 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 indeed. All right, Drain. Um, so uh, I had an issue with our Facebook feed, uh, but there's no question, no other questions on the YouTube feed. Um, but I really appreciate you coming out um, and discussing with with us tonight as to what Alive is doing um, to help with this pandemic, uh, COVID nineteen. Um, I foresee that we're going to be uh, like this for another sixty days. Um, that's what that's what I foresee. At least, and yeah, at and least. yeah, the, uh, yeah. And so, um, um, the aim is we have to be patient. Uh, we have to prioritize. Uh, we just can't go live uh, just because we want to go live uh, for sake. Um, but we have to utilize, make sure that we exercise prudence as relates to the internet usage and this and next thing. You know. Um, I'm sure, I, I know I've seen some pictures uh, uh, doing with you and the family washing cars and, and doing one of the little home um, improvements around the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I say, Lord, look at my brain, you know, my wire some water. I did so much work around the house the first weekend and then lock in the last weekend, I was walking around and looking for things. That, I might probably start painting next, you know, but I would just encourage everyone. I don't think you're going to see a change for another 90 days, right? Because yeah. all the cruise, uh, until at least the end of May, all the hotel goes until the second week in May. Um, and I would rather, I would rather people live than, you know, make a bunch of money. Cause you know what, no matter how much money you have, this virus is not, this virus doesn't destroy Everybody goes. So, you know, let's try and see if we can at least stay in, uh, minimize the spread, uh, practice the social distancing, wash your hands. It's sad that you got to tell people wash their hands, but wash your hands. And I think we're going to be okay on the other side. Yeah, I, 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 I think so too. Uh, one of the things that um, Science Consultants is, is trying to help with this pandemic and uh, this is going to cause uh, 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 okay, uh, another contestant on the network is um, come Wednesday during the full lockdown, we're going to launch a trivia game uh, whereby as there are 10 questions, uh, multiple choice questions, okay. and the first person to answer falsely and correctly, um, you now, uh, there are points, and now shows you exactly how much points you gain and where you rank inside of, of, of the game. And so we're looking to launch that officially come Wednesday night during the official lockdown for uh, the... 24 hours, uh, five day curfew. Um, so we, 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 we expect that we're gonna um, add to that network congestion. Um, the game, we, we could allow up to a thousand persons to play at, at a given time. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing how much behemoths know. There are various um, topics, uh, behemoth topics. We have some cooking topics. You have um, some uh, live questions, you have some just common sense questions. Uh, it's just a, a fun trivia and just to keep people's minds off of this COVID-19 and, and engage and learning in a very fun way. <laughs> so we're very excited to, to launch that come Wednesday night. Well, uh, I'm sure you remind me, I'll hop on myself and check it out with you. 
indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, hopefully one of these nights I'll probably actually leave the host a uh, uh, host a game show one night. Oh yeah, definitely, and we can do it at the headquarters. You, you let me know when you want to do it, and we'll set it up and give away some stuff. So let me know. All right, sounds sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. All right, Dwayne. Uh, I, I, again, I, I thank you for coming on tonight and, and sharing with us, sharing with the Bahamas uh, what a life is doing. We really appreciate you guys during this time. Uh, we utilize the service. Uh, and we are very patient uh, to know that this is a new pandemic and this is a new challenge for life. And a life of making headway to, 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 to resolve and to mitigate this, um, this congestion moving forward as this is something that was never seen, never imagined um in nobody's mind no you know uh, um, no just, just a new reg just a new regular yeah 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 so again I, I really appreciate you taking time out tonight and uh i wish you all the best you and your team uh keep fighting a good fight um and again come around and say night uh we are going to add some more congestion to your network <laughs> You know, hey, thanks for having me, man. Also, thank you and Sanders Consultant. As you know, we use you quite a bit for when we're doing remote stuff. So not only do we sponsor, we also support your business as well, too. Yes. So, you know, for us, we support young behemoth businesses. And uh, I think this show is a good idea. I think we've been partnering now about two years, a year or two now. Yes. And we've had some fun with it. So um, invite me on some more, and let's have some fun, eh? Indeed, indeed. Well do. <laughs> All right, good night, Facebook. Right, Thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you guys on Wednesday nights uh, for uh, Beat the Clock. Good night, everybody. <laughs>